Welcome to the Vetish Foods Health Show with Dr. J. Apte. So today, since we are always talking about Ayurveda, we're going to talk about Ayurveda lifestyle. What is it? Why to join the Ayurvedic lifestyle? And also, what it kind of means to other people too, because everyone has a different idea of what lifestyle means. So welcome, Dr. J. Thank you. So, Carly, it's a beautiful morning outside, and I always love to talk about Ayurvedic lifestyle. So, when we talk about, let me ask you a question. What do you think about when we talk about any lifestyle? What comes to your mind? So, for me, for me, a lifestyle is, I, I always think of lifestyle as mind, body, spirit, and to me, it incorporates, it, for me, it's always about living a healthy lifestyle. Uh -huh. And it means nourishing my mind, it means nourishing my body and nourishing my spirit because yeah. I'm, I'm all about uh, my whole person, not just parts. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, you know, and I really strive to live a healthy lifestyle because that's really important to me. So yeah. that's what a lifestyle means for me. Okay, so it's a good definition you have. And Ayurvedic lifestyle really means the following the routine because, you know, our body, uh, you, you must have heard the word circadian rhythm, right? So 24 hours a day, depending on the light and darkness and all how the plants bloom and how the animals also follow that circadian rhythm. And human being is also the part of the nature. We should follow that rhythm or that routine. And following that routine has lots of benefits. So let's talk a little bit about what that Ayurvedic daily routine is and it begins with the time when we wake up and it's so funny these days everybody is waking up time is around 10 o'clock or at noon people say I follow my own routine but this Ayurvedic routine is all about nature's routine nature's rhythm and all that and when we follow that we see a lot of benefits we create the balance as you mentioned about uh, healthy lifestyle, the body is more healthy, the mind is more peaceful, and all those kind of things. So it's always the daily routine begins with what time do we wake up, and it's very ideal to wake up around like just before the sunrise, like around six o'clock, because in the past we so much talked about Vata, Pitta, and Kapha Dosha. So every four hours after sunrise, to 24 hours a day, these energies change. So before sunrise is the Vata Dosha energy, which is related to our actions and movements and our mind and creativity and all that. So when you wake up early in the morning, you feel a lot of energy. You get energized. You feel well rested and you are just ready for the coming day. So it's always good to wake up in the morning. And then the first thing you can do is just sit down and do 10-15 minutes of meditation. And that meditation is mainly cleansing your mind, cleansing of all the stress, creating that positivity in mind, achieving the peace for the whole day. Because, uh, Carly, it's very important that when we are interacting with other people during the day, it, we are looking at the world through our mind, not only through our eyes. So if your mind is more peaceful, everything is very happy and cheerful. If your mind is very stressed out, then the whole world is full of stress. If your mind is very anxious, the whole world is full of anxiety. So our world changes depending on the state of mind. So taking like 10, 15 minutes for yourself, listening to the music, listening to the spiritual uh, meditation, just looking at the nature, looking at the trees, looking at the sky, and having that peace of mind is very, very important in the morning. And do you know a funny thing is people's day begins with checking the internet, going to their phone and checking how many emails I have, and that looking at those emails, the stress level starts building up. So from the moment they are up, the stress level also starts going up. So it is very important to bring it down. So wake up early and then meditate for a few minutes. Then do all the cleansing, take shower, eat your breakfast and all that. And then your actual the work day begins. 
and ayurvedically also we recommend that people get lot of work done in the morning hours than in the late afternoon and all because in the morning is more kapha related time your endurance is very high your energy level is very high so you get more work done in the morning time and then Yes. I have actually a question now. We're, um, in Ayurvedic, since there's three doshas, Pitta, Vata, yeah. Kapha, yeah. do each of those have a different wake-up time? Like, I, I, I know from just my own studies, I know every organ, you know, starts to, wakes up or does its work, and, you know, so every organ, you know, turns on, if you will, to do it work at different hours, and it cleanses at different hours. And since there's three different doshas and body types, uh -huh. do those individual people also have like you, like you said, a circadian rhythm that's different than the other one, or is everyone supposed to get up at 6 a.m.? So that's what I'm, I'm curious about. I, I agree with you that when you wake up in the morning early, like after the, the yeah. sunrise, you, you yeah. get energy from the moon from the night before, and you get the sun's rising energy and all that. Then I am curious about, for people that are want to follow the Ayurvedic lifestyle, if they are Pitta, Vata, or Kapha, are it mm -hmm. different for each one of those, or is it you know flat 6 a.m. for everybody? Okay, it's a very good question because this daily rhythm, daily routine we are talking about is the nature cycle. So that is same for everybody. And let me give you the example. Like we talk about breakfast. What foods you eat depends on your body constitution. But everybody should be eating breakfast in the morning, like around 8 o'clock. Everybody should be eating lunch around you know, between noon and 1. Then what they eat, what are their food choices are different depending on your prakriti. But here we are talking about this lifestyle, the daily routine that is based on nature cycle. So that is same for everybody. Okay. And then we talked about, and then we talked about getting a lot of work done in the morning. And what I see in my practice that because of this IT, people pick their own hours and their day starts very late in the morning and their day ends, do you know what time? like three or four o'clock in the morning when they were supposed to wake up within an hour or so. So that whole rhythm, the whole routine had changed. It has gone upside down. And a lot of people have serious health issues because of that. Because during the, depending on the circadian rhythm, all the organs in the body have their own time when they are more active. Okay, so if you're supposed to eat your lunch around noon to one, that means all your digestive juices and digestive fire is very strong and ready to digest all the food. But if you end up eating at four o'clock in the afternoon, those digestive enzymes are gone, they are hiding somewhere else, so they won't digest your food. You have to wait till next noon time, so they will really are active again. So instead of creating our own routine, we should follow the nature something. It's that is the key and that is missing in our life. And I see that about 80, 90 percent of the time, the diseases, especially we talk about diabetes and obesity and heart problems, high cholesterol and all, they are these days are called like lifestyle diseases. And lifestyle diseases because all this daily routine circadian rhythm has been completely changed. And if we put that back in the rhythm, people start seeing a lot of changes for the positive lifestyle and for the positive health. So I, I agree with you that, I agree with you. I just want to, because I know there's a couple of other questions that viewers, so I want to tie yes. this all in. Um, yeah. I really do agree with you that lifestyle I, as you will, illnesses are happening because more and more of our culture, like you said, with the IT culture or or whatever people are working, there's a lot more of a sedentary lifestyle, which does create diabetes and obesity and all these other things. What I also love, I know I'm going to get asked this because I know that a lot of the audience that I deal with because they are into health and wanting to be have a better mind by spirit. In uh -huh. this lifestyle, Ayurvedic lifestyle, when we talk about getting up in the morning, you know, doing your 10 to 15 minutes and nourishing your, your mind and calming and getting ready for the day. And I know yeah. we've talked about another really important thing in a previous episode about also starting a day with warm water with lemon and ginger and yeah. some honey. Um, yeah. So I, I like to tie in a little bit of those bits too so people can kind of get a flow. Um, so mm, okay. We start the morning and like we said, we get up at six and then we... We do something to calm our mind, and then before we have our, 
are before we have our 8 a.m. breakfast, are we having our warm water with lemon and honey and then having our breakfast at 8 a.m. And, you know, then, like you said, get some work done because you're you're more alive and awake and then, you know, you have your lunch at noon. Just so people can kind of, you know, because people always love these different things. And then the other thing I think is be a really important piece to tie in here. When is a good time to do your exercise? In other words, is it better in the morning or the evening or does that also depend on the dosha? Because I know for some people they have a ton of energy in the morning for exercise. Yeah. However, some people can't stand doing it in the morning. They don't feel like they have the energy and they have to do it in the afternoon or the evening. And then some people, if they wait till the evening, they're so tired that it never happens. So and since we're talking about lifestyle and mind, body, spirit as well, I'd love to tie in the piece of, you know, because we're talking about disease, sedentary lifestyles, you know, exercise is a big component to eating healthy and all these other things. Where does that tie in? So, you know what I'm saying? I just want to put all the kind of beautiful puzzle pieces in. Yeah, so I wasn't completely, I wasn't finished about the whole 24 hours a day. And right. exercise is definitely going to be in the evening. And I'll talk about who can exercise in the morning and all that. But you mentioned a very good point that in the morning, when we wake up, we brush our teeth. The first thing is you drink a glass of warm water and lemon, depending on your prakriti again. If you are more pitta type, you can add one teaspoon of ghee. We talked about all the pure fats and all last time. If you are more kapha type, you can drink ginger tea, ginger, lemon, and honey in the water. If you are more vata predominant, you can add one tablespoon of sesame oil in that water and drink that in the morning and then sit and meditate. Many of people also know the breathing technique we call pranayama. And also you can do that a few, a few minutes of pranayama if even before you start your meditation because pranayam has the breath has the effect on the body and also on the mind it helps to calm your mind down so you can go at the deeper state very easily uh, for, prana, for meditation so finish that eat your breakfast uh, Kali, i also want to mention something that people do not take shower in the morning these days everybody is taking shower at night but I would recommend everybody to feel fresh, feel lighter, feel more energy. At least take a quick shower in the morning when you are getting ready. Even brush your teeth. So many things I see people are doing wrong. When they wake up, they don't brush their teeth. They brush their teeth after eating breakfast. But all night you have all your mouth full of bacteria and all. So when you are getting ready, when you are doing all the cleansing, it is important that you brush your teeth even before you eat. It is also a good idea to have a good bowel movement in the morning. So you feel again lighter and you feel energetic and all that. So that I include everything in getting ready. And eat your breakfast according to your body constitution. And then you are ready for the work day. And you are getting more work done in the morning. So finish all the tasks which you want to get done in the morning hours because of your uh, lot of endurance and strong energy. Then around noon, eat your lunch, but make sure do not eat in front of your computer at your desk. Go away from it and you want to enjoy your meal and enjoy your food. So eat your lunch for an half an hour. And then important thing is take 20 minutes of power nap. And this power nap is kind of recommended all around the world. Like Mexican people call it siesta. Indian people call it vama kichu. Here we call it cat nap or the power nap. And that power nap is beneficial because what happens when we eat food, all the blood goes to your digestive system. It's not here in your brain. So you feel like dozing off. So respect your body. Give your body like 20 minutes to just rest. And then you go back to your desk and start working again. But the 20 minute of all that does all the magic. And you are so energized. So you can get more work done in the afternoon. But in the afternoon, it's a, uh, like before evening. It's four hours is more vata time. And vata dosha is more creativity. So I always recommend people to have the meeting. Have brainstorming session. Discuss with your colleague. If you want to have like a group meeting or something, have those kind of things in the afternoon because your mind is more active in the afternoon, in the late afternoon from like two to six o'clock. 
so use that wise time and because you start your day early you end your work day early like around 5 o'clock and then you go to the gym exercise you can bike ride you can run you can jog you can lift weights whatever you feel like again depending on your prakriti we always recommend different exercises for kapha people it's always good to do the aerobic exercise like join the aerobic class or do zumba dancing or do brisk walking or play tennis or something and why exercise in the evening because it is vata time vata is the movement so it moves your body easily than in the kapha time or in the pitta time okay if you are more vata predominant then those people can do more yoga meditation tai chi qigong something more calming to their mind if you are more pitta that fiery type of person then you can just go for swimming you can exercise in the evening but not during in the afternoon because the weather is very hot in the afternoon so and another benefit of it is during the day time we are just sitting at the desk in front of computer so what is happening is we are using more of our brain and body just sitting there sedentary so in the evening body is ready to do something so it is very important that you end uh, like your work day with one hour of exercise so body feels lighter more energy and your mind is relaxed so the whole day you use your mind now the mind is relaxing the whole day your body was just sitting down there at the desk now you are using your body so both get into balance suppose there are few women who are at home and all they can exercise in the morning you can exercise 24 hours at any time but the best time following this ayurvedic daily routine is early morning or in the uh, late afternoon before sunset and then rest for a half an hour one hour and then eat your dinner around 6:30 7 o'clock do not wait till you eat till your dinner time is like 9 or 10 o'clock at night you will sleep with a full stomach you will body will not digest the food you will get lot of mucus and congestion and so many of the problems so you have to go to sleep eat dinner around 6:37 and your bedtime should be between 10 and 11 not 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning Okay, so then I have one question that I know that you're, okay, so we say after lunch to take a 20 minute power nap. So yes. now why is it that if we dinner at 6 or 6.30, why yes. couldn't someone in theory go to sleep with food in their stomach? I mean, I know it's very, I mean, I know it's, 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 a, it's a counterintuitive thing because we, we talked about lunch, you know, you do your power nap because, you know, the blood goes to your stomach so you can digest. Yes. So yes. why is that different um, at dinner time? Okay. First thing is Ayurvedically lunch should be the main meal, okay? Because pitta dosha is predominant in the afternoon. So is the sun. So we eat like a good lunch. So body needs that time to digest it well. In the evening and in the morning, the sun is more cool. So our lunch, our breakfast and dinner should be very light. And then Ayurveda recommends after you finish your dinner, you take a leisure walk. And they say walk like 100 steps. 100 steps that means take a 10 minute of leisure walk. It's not like a brisk walk that where you just kind of get tired and perspire and all that. But leisure walk is just kind of enjoy your nature. By doing that also you are helping your body is to start digesting the food better. But there has to be three hours between you eat your dinner and actually go to bed. And those three hours the carly are not to go back to your internet or start browsing the net but this is the family time you know i have two children and both of them work full time and they constantly talk to me about mom how can we achieve that work life balance and all this so you have to have the life you are not a machine to work like 24 hours a day so evening time is your time to relax to do some of your hobbies few people love to paint and draw or read the books or embroider or do whatever they love to do. So those evening hours should be kept for them to have the life back. So here eight hours we are talking about working. We meditated in the morning, we did exercise, we ate three meals a day and we are having life balance, like a 
personal time and all and you are going to bed on time so that is kind of the routine and at night we should be asleep because when millions of years ago human being was developed we didn't have electricity so during day time as the sun rises we start doing all the stuff but at night when we are asleep body is doing all the healing internal healing taking care of all the wear and tear so we should be asleep we should not be staying up late at night we talked about it engineers but there is another group of people who have lot of problems are school going kids especially high school kids you know they have so much homework they have so many assignments they have so many projects so they go to bed at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning i get so many of the uh, teenage kids and their, their mothers come to me and having lot of issues then they start getting acne they start losing their hair their digestion goes uh, bad and all those things so if people follow this in the nutshell let me tell you kind of in the brief eating three meals a day waking up around 6 o'clock going to bed at 10 o'clock meditating for 10 15 minutes in the morning and eat uh, and exercising for one hour in the evening so if people follow that that is the routine and people will be more free they will be more healthy they will achieve this work balance and you know there is one saying that following this routine you are swimming with the current so your current is pushing you where you want to reach your destination and not following this routine is you are swimming against the current you are working so hard and current is pushing you backward so you are not going to reach your destination sooner and your life will be more stressful it will be more difficult and the worst part of it you will have lots of health issues see this ayurvedic daily routine is mainly to get the best of all these vata pitta kapha energies and to prevent most of the diseases mainly digestive issues your insomnia your blood pressure obesity diabetes heart problems all these are related to this daily routine and lifestyle do you have any other question So what I like about it is because I think in general we need to start teaching our culture to get back to nature. And what you're talking about is all, you know, very logical. Like you said we yeah. didn't have electricity. They woke up with the sun, they went to sleep with the sun if you will. So I think it's really important I and I I I know I feel when I go for my eat, I go for a walk every evening and I, mm -hmm. for me being and just detoxing from you know working and everything you're being in nature and just listening to the sounds or you could be listening to whatever it is in your headphones it could be you know music or i mean sometimes i like to just uh, chant and walk i do internal chanting japa yeah. chant walking uh -huh. so i just think the more we the more we get back to nature the more we will feel i don't know how, you, how it's kind of like an innate thing we kind of know internally what we need and how we feel it's just like yeah. we said, we get so pulled by all these other things and technology and everything we kind of lose or lose our way if you will. Yeah. So I really I really do love the Ayurvedic lifestyle and I really love that we treat people, you know, in within the Ayurvedic lifestyle it's like we are treating them as an individual and mm -hmm. that you're as a holistic as a whole person. Yeah. Um so I think I think we'll put together a whole blog post and I think one things we'll put in there cuz I I know I sometimes forget like I think if we put okay this time wake up and then the water for the three different type of of dosha so pita should have this type of water vata this type of water you know and i think that'll really help people just to uh, you know lay out so we'll kind of map out for everybody in a beautiful mm -hmm. blog post of what we've discussed yeah. and you know talk a little bit about you know what are times to exercise what are the good waters for the different doshas and and we'll also list i think some of the benefits of leading this lifestyle yeah another uh, thing i want to add one piece to this lifestyle carly is we talked about the daily routine and ayurved also talks about the seasonal routine remember during the foods we were talking about we have to eat seasonally and eat more salads during and all the fruit during summer time and have lots of soups and root vegetables during winter fall and winter time and all that so ayurved also tells you to change the lifestyle during those seasons so uh, your daily routine is same but you fine tune it during depending on the season 
so they always recommend to use coconut oil because it has cooling effect to use during summer time and when we, uh, we transition to fall then switch to sesame oil because it has warming effect on that then you exercise like uh, you can swim do swimming and those kind of thing more activity during summer time which will cool your body down and when you transition to fall time you want to keep your body warm so you can do different exercises do more of the qigong yoga those kind of exercises during uh, fall time then comes the spring time in the spring it's mainly kapha dosha the heaviness allergies mucus congestion so spice up your life and do more vigorous activities like aerobic exercise aerobic dancing playing tennis playing badminton all those kind of things so you keep those doshas into balance finally it always comes down to maintaining the balance of those doshas and here ayurved gives you the secret that during spring the kapha is aggravating during summer pitta is aggravating during fall and winter vata is aggravating so make all those doshas happy by changing your lifestyle during every season and that's the beauty about it and so what i think a lot of people don't put the dots with together is what you're talking about when we're talking about changing your lifestyles and the exercise if you think about this okay in the winter right as you said our bodies get cold we want to warm up yeah. so doing things like qigong and yoga yeah. actually heat your body exactly. she's talking about doing in this in the summertime also swimming that actually cools your body so if you actually think logically about what she's saying and the different activities you realize that a vigorous exercise which will clear me bronchodilates your lungs and helps clear congestion and everything so there's a lot of logic to it i think a lot of people haven't put the puzzle pieces together that yeah. what things warm what things cool what things clear the lungs yeah. and i think so we'll do a wonderful job of just you know when we do the blog post for this particular episode okay. tying in a little bit of the tips and tools as to you know the whys and here and there so <laughs> as usual we could talk forever and i don't want to inundate everybody so i want to leave this one for now and then like i said everyone knows i'll put together a beautiful blog post and we can actually put a lot of tips and tools into this one i thank you guys so much for joining us we love your questions because then we know what you want to hear about and learn about so please send us questions as usual it's always been a joy to learn with you and and share your message with the world so thank you so much dr jay for joining me today thank you i really appreciate it and um everybody i encourage you to go check out hnwellness.com where you can find out all about dr jay and we'll be coming out with some beautiful foods soon that will be on vetafoods.com and that's uh will also tie into the beautiful ayurvedic lifestyle you can always find me at carlyalissathorn.com and um we wish everyone a beautiful day thank you so much for joining us mm -hmm.